All right, everyone, this is lesson number five. We are multiplying with fractions and with mixed numbers. Um, what we want to watch for here is, with multiplying with fractions, is we do not need common denominators. All right, um, so let's look at that there. No common denominators. All right, which is nice because obviously that's where a lot of the work was going at there. So when we multiply, we don't need any common denominators. Um, what we're doing here is, and there's our four steps. The first thing we're doing is we're looking to see if we have mixed numbers because we have to change them to improper fractions. Now remember, a mixed number, a mixed number, all right, ends up having a whole number and then a fraction. So when we look at example number one, do we have mixed numbers? No, no, we don't. There's no whole numbers out in front. So what we're doing now is we're looking for something that's called cross division. All right. Now with cross division, this is a way of making our problems more manageable. If we don't, we get huge numbers, well, time huge numbers, but we get larger numbers depending on the problem. And, and then we got to do simplifying. And, and you guys saw from yesterday, um, or maybe not yesterday, yesterday, but from previous days, um, simplifying always isn't the most exciting thing to do. So if we can limit that, so much better. So with cross division, what we're doing is we are looking on the diagonal. So as long as someone's upstairs and someone's downstairs, we can simplify. So let's look at the number seven. And let's look at the number eight. Is there a number that fits into the number seven and fits into the number eight? What I always do is I start with a smaller number. Give me a number that fits into seven. Well, <laughs> the only thing that fits in is one and seven. Um, and, and we can't use one because what happens when you divide something by one? Well, it doesn't change it. It's the exact same. It's like spinning around in circles. It's fun, but you're just going to end up dizzy. All right. So there's nothing to do on this diagonal because the only other number that fits into seven is seven, and seven's not going to fit evenly into eight. So let's look on the other diagonal here. All right. Do we have a number that fits into three and into nine? And the answer there is yes. Who fits into three and into nine? Well, the number three does. Three fits into three one time. So we cross it out and it becomes a one. So really what we're doing is we are simplifying. Um, we're just doing it with our smaller numbers. And so since we said three fit into three and we said three fit into nine, how many times does three fit into nine? Well, we can take out three groups of it. Now we're ready to multiply across. So seven times one is seven. Three times eight is 24. I cannot simplify 7 24ths, so I am done with it. Pretty much the general rule is, is if you do all your cross division, you won't have simplifying to do. Now, it's not always the case, but 98% of the time, let's say. Now, let's go backwards for one second. If you didn't use cross division, you would have had 7 times 5 is 35. You would have 9 times 8 is 72. And then you'd have to simplify 35 70 seconds. All right, it's much easier to simplify with the three and the nine than it is with 35 and 72. So we do want to get you used to that. So let's look at question number two. Do we have any cross division? And the answer is yes. We've actually got it in both locations. So let's check out here. Let's check the four and the two. Who fits into four and into two? Well, two does. Two fits into two one time. Two fits into four two times. Who fits into three and into three? Yeah, three does. Three fits into three one time. Three fits into three one time. So now we just multiply across. One times one, ooh, one. And two times one, yep, that's two. It is one half. We are done. Let's go to question number three. Uh, cross division. Now, one of the things that we want to watch for, it's not always that the smaller number needs to fit into the bigger number. Sometimes it works out, like we saw there, the fact that uh, three fits into nine, two fits into four. But 4 doesn't fit into 10. But wait a second, wait a second. Who does fit into 4 and into 10? All right. Did you say 2 does? Yeah, so 2 does. So let's divide both those numbers by 2. How many groups of 2 can you take out of 4? Well, 2 of them. It goes into it 2 times. Um, how many times does 2 fit into 10? Well, we can take out 5 groups of them. Now we can multiply across. 2 times 3? 6. 5 times 5? 25. And again, no one fits into both of these numbers, so it is taken care of. We don't have to do any more with it. Let's go down to question number four, because now is when our mixed numbers have joined the party. So when we have mixed numbers, 
you have to, and you go back up to your steps up there, and go back up to your steps, oh, 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 change mixed numbers into improper fractions. Now, remember, an improper fraction. Improper fractions when the number in the numerator, the top one, is bigger than the one that's in the denominator. So what we end up doing is, is we can multiply and then add. So 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus 1, that gives me 21. So I've got 21 fourths. So let's say that again there. We multiply and then we add. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus 1 is 21. So we have 21 fourths. Let's look at the other one here. All right. 4 and 2 thirds. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. So it's 14, and then we keep it down the same 14 thirds. All right. So what you could do is go through the whole renaming process of of, of, of regrouping. I think you're going to find this to kind of speed things up a little bit. So let's look for cross division because now it's just like the problems that we had been working on. Let's look at the diagonal. Who fits into 21 and into 3? 3 does. 3 fits into 21 as 7 times. 3 fits into 3 one time. Who fits into 4 and into 14? Absolutely, Mr. Dolphin. Absolutely, it is the number two. Two fits into four two times, and two fits into 14 seven times. So now we can multiply across. Seven times seven is 49. Two times one is two. Now, one of the things that we're going to say here is, is we can actually stop right there. I know what you're thinking. You're going, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's an improper fraction. Shouldn't we simplify it? We can. We can. We can simplify it or we can leave it how it is. As you start moving up into your levels of math, improper fractions become the norm. Um, they become acceptable. So if you do simplify it, it's fine. If you leave it as an improper fraction, you can stop right there. Uh, let's go on to question number, ooh, let's go on to question number six. Let's do that one there. All right. So improper fractions first. Improper fractions. So five times six is 30. 30 plus one is 31. So we have 31 fifths. Now here's the deal. 15. Oh my goodness. This isn't a mixed number. I can't do my normal multiplying and adding. That's okay. Because an improper fraction is when the larger number is in the numerator. To make any whole number into an improper fraction, all we do is slap a 1 underneath it. Because think about it. What is 15 divided by 1? It's 15. So if you have a whole number, all right, so make a little note there. Whole number, all right, all right, put a 1 under. So let's go back up here and let's look for some cross division. Who fits into 5 and into 15? 5 does. 5 fits into 5 one time. 5 fits into 15 three times. So now when we multiply, oh my goodness, well, I'll take this part. 1 times 1, that's 1. All right. All right. I'll, I'll do the top as well. Um, but it's 31 times 3. So if we need to, just kind of come off to the side. Da, 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 da. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Some of you are thinking, come on, we could have done that in my head. That's fine. I don't mind. Um, but it's 93 over 1. Now, we do want to clean this one up because 93 ones, yes, it's in proper fraction, but come on, 93 divided by 1? Yeah, that is 93 that we've got. So the difference, that one thing that we want to watch for is, is our cross division. The other thing that we want to end up watching for is our simplifying, I'm sorry, our, our improper fractions. I'm sorry there. The simplifying is your cross division. All right, we're taking care of that there at the beginning. Um, again, this is fine because there's no number that fits into 49 and into 2. What we don't want you doing is back over here is 21 times 14 and then 4 times 3 and then leaving that as an improper fraction. Um, let's do the last one here. Let's bounce back to question number five because I wanted to show you the whole number first and then kind of give you an opportunity there. So let's talk through it there. So the first thing we're looking to do is, like I said, at the top of your page, improper fractions. So five times four is 20. 20 plus four is 24. So we've got 24 fifths. Let's look at the next one there. Take a moment, see if you can put it down. Did you? Did you? 
did you say ten ninths? Yeah, nine times one is nine, nine plus one is ten, so we do have ten ninths. And let's look for some cross division, and oh my goodness, it is everywhere. First of all, let's start with the five and the ten. Who can you fit into five and into ten? And here you would say is... Five. Five fits into five one time. Five can fit into ten two times. Now, be careful, because at first glance, I was like, there's no cross division here, but oh, there is. Did you? Did you? Did you? Who's there? Who's there? The number three. Yeah, three fits into both of them. So three fits into nine three times, and three fits into 24 eight times. So now we can multiply across. Eight times two is 16. One times three is your three, so you've got your 16 thirds. Again, we can stop here because there's no number that fits into 16, no number that fits into three. We can leave that alone. If you didn't find all your cross division, we would have a number that goes into both of them. So that is something we want to make sure that we are getting. And again, we can leave it as the improper fraction right now. I've got no problem with that. We'll work on that some more in class, um, but that's all that we've got right now.